नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर पूजा झा नायर रिहेबिलिटेशन साइकोलॉजिस्ट एंड को फाउंडर ऑफ टोटल सोल्यूशन हैदराबाद नमस्ते आई एम राकेश जी नायर आई एम अ रिहेबिलिटेशन साइकोलॉजिस्ट एंड द फाउंडर डायरेक्टर ऑफ टोटल सोल्यूशन हैदराबाद एंड वी बोथ टेक अ प्राइड टू इंट्रोड्यूस दिस न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ टोटल सोल्यूशन where we are going to discuss about certain research articles from the field of education and psychology it's a privilege to talk about those papers which are really going to create an impact on different kinds of intervention which we are practicing to make our children's life better um i i take an initiative ragesh and talk about the article which we have picked up for today this is from uh, the authors are barbara jetlin and all and from university of cambridge published very recently on 23rd june 2021 and it was so wonderful to see when they are talking about that how it is important to measure cognitive flexibility and it's a wonderful comparison when they are doing between a core iq score and cognitive flexibility index what is cognitive flexibility they have given a very beautiful description of it and in very simple words it's like it's it's the different decision making strategies which we use and we keep changing according to the new demands which the environment is going to impose on us cognitive flexibility is the thing which makes you adapt very efficiently in a given situation or even in a changing environment So Rakesh when I was reading this article and uh, I was I was just coming across certain terms and I want you to discuss or you to throw some light on that that what would be this relation what they are describing between frontal lobe and the cognitive skills Okay before uh, I get into that I would like to tell you that cognitive flexibility has a wider uh, reach or it has a wider uh, approach now there are many studies which are being continue uh, which has been done and uh, one of many publish has, uh, papers has been published in the year 2015 uh, mri studies especially where they are trying to correlate uh, what are the uh, markers or what are the identifying factors for cognitive flexibility and uh, they have done many neuropsychological tests associated with that what they have found out is cognitive flexibility is predominantly a frontal lobe function wherein many many uh, frontal lobe areas or uh, associated areas are functioning or uh, at the higher level and uh, it is from a functional point of view it is a culmination of many of our other cognitive abilities like working memory inhibition uh, uh, set shifting ability set shifting one of the very important or predominant factors of dorsolateral prefrontal cortex mm-hmm. so rakesh for for all our you know like uh, you know that we are doing this program even for educators who might not know about very big terms so can you just let us know what is this set shifting yes set shifting is nothing but see uh, basically for uh, if i if we talk in a day to day perspective for a, it is always said that multitasking for a female is very easy what is multitasking it is nothing but you are able to switch your attention from one point to another with the same intensity and you are able to finish up multiple tasks at a time yes okay so from a neuropsychological or from a cognitive perspective this one ability helps your functioning to be better you become more efficient when multiple tasks are given uh, for you mm-hmm. same way inhibiting a response in many of our condition now clinical practice and all uh, we be uh, able to see that many of the children who are diagnosed with the condition of adhd attention deficit hyperactivity disorder they are they are having a difficulty to inhibit a response whereas in autism it is uh, proven to be or it is said to be that it is inhibition is better than that okay it is uh, the other way around so inhibiting a response before thinking or before that uh, thought and uh, this comes they are able to, they are just acting it so inhibiting that action is a difficulty for them working yes. memory mostly you will be seeing in uh, children with learning difficulties where in reading is a big task especially yes. dyslexia then they have the 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 aspect of working memory especially doing math math requires that kind of a thing uh, that can that ability working memory as a main Uh, construct or an ability wherein 
you need to process multiple uh, information mm-hmm. at a uh, at a given virtual point of time and come out with an answer so that's what working memory does so you need to hold that information memory yeah until you process it and exactly. give the answer and or solve it so holding and processing has to do simultaneously because yes. once you hold and then you send it for process it's it doesn't go that way you have to hold that see for example 24 plus 3 you have to hold that 24 uh, plus 3 somewhere at the same time you have to send it for processing also so multiple levels has to be done multiple so, levels so of processing so you mean to say that is that all these points what you are telling mm-hmm. are somewhere directly related to our frontal lobe most of them see because uh, there is it's it's not that 24 as a number is uh, been uh, represented in the frontal lobe yeah. where it is been represented is the processing of coming out with an answer okay where in multiple areas for for example identification of the number is not necessarily done by the frontal lobe mm. it is done by many other uh, in, it is a it is a coordinated effect of effort of many other lobes okay so when which uh, function has to come at which point of time so that the processing become efficient that is what or in uh, execution control and sequencing of the processes is done by uh, the frontal lobe mostly. So in, in this article you would see that uh, like as you can see we are already giving you details about this article and you would see that they are beautifully explaining about the relationship between frontal lobe and cognition. So Rakesh I understand that you know maybe a final IQ score is not going to give me any indication that what program I should make for this child who is struggling or if a parent is coming to me with this complaint that my child forgets very easily or on one to one he can perform but not able to perform when he goes to school or for his final exam but still in our clinical practice if you have noticed everyone comes and asks you for an IQ test or the school knows that and they say and very few people they are asking that what is the cognitive score or what is the index of cognitive score of my child see there is a, I would start off with saying that uh, always says that a number can't define a person true, okay so a ratio or any kind of a score doesn't actually calculate at least a, a, a small person uh, percentage of what a person's abilities are mm-hmm. because see but somewhere you need to quantify that somewhere there was a need to uh, you know the history of intelligence test yes. why they have come up and it was just to differentiate like uh, children according to different abilities so that they can be taught in a better way so that was the requirement of that and then from there it has developed to multiple levels but yes. numbers can't define a person now Having said that, we need to, because as it is a scientific discipline and it has got a lot of scientific evidence and impact on it, so we need to uh, put some numbers to it so that we can quantify it and we can uh, uh, transfer the uh, whatever the findings that we are getting out of it. Mm-hmm. And it that can have an universal impact also. So mm-hmm. there is certain purpose of for making it a scientific discipline. That's why the number of scoring or the scoring process and all has come or the number to define the abilities has come. Now, IQ as a traditional IQ test may not be able to uh, mm, tell you all about the cognitive processes, but okay. there are many initial, if you look at the cognitive testing or cognitive assessment, mm-hmm. many of our intellectual tests were actually, or the tests or the items in the intellectual test were actually measuring the cognition. cognition many aspects of cognition but not all the aspects of cognition because okay. intelligence just doesn't limit itself was not limiting itself only to the cognition. cognitive True. aspect of it True. so, so they, they had certain items to measure the only the language aspect or certain aspects of the language or certain aspects of adaptability mm-hmm. so those kind of things were also involved more in that so it can't be uh, said that it, intelligence tests were only for cognitive So Mm -hmm. hence came, uh, later it was understood that yes, cognition has a major role to play, the importance of cognition, many other researchers has contributed to that. Since cognitive psychology or cognition as a field has uh, developed multifold, so hence cognitive testing has emerged. So so do you feel that, you know, uh, we should definitely have, even while doing IQ test, a kind of, you know, tool in our hand which will also give us some cognitive areas scores 
as well as maybe IQ for certain you know purposes of classification or let's say we have to send a child for uh, CBSE accommodations or exam facilities what they provide us for that purpose. Yes. So both should be given. Yes Pooja, um, in, uh, it, is, it is a wonderful thing that you have uh, brought out. See there are certain uh, uh, certain other administrative requirements for which these scores will definitely help for example getting accommodations and for other requirements mm -hmm. but ultimately why do we do assessment to make an effective intervention, intervention program or to, to help, help the child to further help the child that is the that is the basic purpose of doing an assessment exactly. how a change can be brought out hence yes. you need a profile of the child so for understanding the or making a profile you definitely need a uh, cognitive uh, areas to be plotted and mm -hmm. once you are able to plot that, then you will be able to know where the child, accord, I mean, according to his age and other exposure and all these other factors given into consideration, mm -hmm. where the child stands and how we can bring mm -hmm. a change or make it better. Wonderful. I think I, I am very thankful to these set of authors who could think of such wonderful topic and came up with this research article. So I could learn from this article that Cognitive Flexibility Index is going to play a very crucial role when it comes to understand how to make a, an effective intervention program for them or whatever skills they are lacking, how to teach. So this is what I could learn today from this article. I would uh, add on to that by saying that they have put, I, I really uh, respect them because they have put it in the context of COVID. Mm -hmm. how people are able to adapt to situations or those who are able to adapt to situations or such kind of unpredictable situations which hasn't been heard of for yes. quite some time for generations yes. how people are able to adjust to it that's right. the context where they have placed this cognitive flexibility how better or how well a person yeah. will be able to adjust yeah. to it uh, depends on the exactly. flexibility of that person cognitive exactly. flexibility of the person so hopefully see you all again very soon with another research article